Jamaica is at a changing and a pivotal point in its economic growth. I really do feel stuck. We certainly need to start seeing some level of growth. So we really need investors to bring Jamaican products to the world. Helping our SME and corporate clients to raise capital to take their businesses to the next level is a serious focus of our investment banking business line. I definitely want to win this competition so that I can take my family business to the next level. This is one of the businesses that we think we can scale very well, uh, very quickly, and keep the costs under control. Capital Quest is true to life. It's a journey of entrepreneurs that are at a stage where they've developed good businesses and they're ready and willing to take their business to the next level. If we don't address the demand that is there, someone else will have to come in and fill those demands. There are things that we need to do to increase our production output, so we would need some capital to get all of this completed. We have big dreams and vision and we know we can do it and we'll get to the next level that we want to get. This is a high-stakes competition for an equity investment of up to $50 million. Previously on NCB Capital Quest. Your corporate social responsibility challenge will take place right here at the Mona Heights Primary School. As a business owner, you have to think about good corporate social responsibility. What I can do to help you guys keep costs down is that you guys have to be willing to get dirty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they would really appreciate it that total strangers came in and created this room for them. Surprise! Mr. Marbear, on behalf of the NCB Foundation and the helping hands of the entrepreneurs of Capital Quest, it gives me great pleasure to turn over your newly renovated Mona Heights Primary School Culture Room. Good morning, entrepreneurs. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations on reaching this far. You have showed that you certainly have some of the requisite skills to grow your businesses and to attract investment. Your determination, patience, ability to adjust to changing situations, and teamwork all demonstrate your improvements thus far. Today, you will work with your mentor to prepare your pitch presentation to the panel of judges. Your mentors will work on your style, delivery, oratorical skills, and general content to help you prepare the most compelling presentations. As part of your preparation, you will be subjected to a mock pitch session to a distinguished panel representing various areas of expertise. Their job is to be very candid and constructive with their feedback to ensure you are adequately prepared to face the real judges in the Capital Quest boardroom. So take full advantage of your dress rehearsal and final coaching. Go now and prepare and good luck. Our mentors for today are Sandra Glasgow, Managing Director of Biz Tactics Limited, and Marcia Woon Choi, CEO of Action Coach Jamaica, seen you for quite a while so I'd like you all to update me on just what the experience has been like so I'm gonna start first with you Nayana what has it been like well this um, experience of Capital Quest has been a great one for me um, it has uh, its own um, challenges but also what I've learned and the relationships I have actually you know gotten to establish um, those have been positive and really encouraging, you know, to see other business leaders like myself who, you know, they're, they're motivated and they, you know, they're just great people. Uh, part of the thing for me is that I have a very small team mm -hmm. and so 
there are times when I leave like I said I have to go home and I have to work over time but that's fine that's part of the journey and I'm enjoying it I'm tired as you know sometimes very tired but I'm enjoying the journey well, I share the same sentiments as Nan and Henneko in that I think this experience has been a fantastic one I have built great relationships with everyone that has been a competitor here and it has been a great learning experience I feel that our company the stationery center has pretty much plateaued and I think this competition and everything I've learned has given me that motivation and that energy and that extra drive because I've always been a driven person to take my business to the next level and it really got me thinking although I had ideas before it really got me thinking a lot more especially with regards to leveraging the company how has this whole process affected you as a an individual I mean you as your wife seen you recently <laughs> <laughs> for a short period yes, yes. Uh, but the, 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 one of the, re the, the things is that she's she's heavily involved in everything that goes on at Vincenta. Yeah, so we have, we have talked there. yeah we have talked a lot more about the business and about the direction that the business is, yeah. is going in and about uh, what are the things that are important yeah, both yeah. in the, the short term and the long term. But the payoff is going to be great if you win this competition. <laughs> <laughs> what about you Denise? Because I mean St. Elizabeth yeah. is a far, far away. Yes so it has taken a lot of my time. Yes. But um, I'm managing quite well. It has been a journey. Yeah. Um, but well, you're a, a soldier. I mean, yes, soldier. You have done this so team. often. I have yeah. a strong team as well. Um, my team, they execute and they have been doing well. We have been in touch and things are going well. So, okay. So they are backing up quite well at, back there. Okay. Yes. You have been thrown some curveballs in the past, so I would want to suggest that you try to be as prepared as possible sure. because listen opportunities come at very strange times yeah. all right and you might think that you know next week is is it <laughs> but it could actually be today we are going to have to do a lot of work as Lisanne said working on the business in order to not work in it let me outline how today is gonna go we're gonna be working on your pitch preparation so I'm gonna meet with you individually for around 30 minutes where you'll present what you have done so far and give your feedback so you'll pitch to me and you will adjust accordingly based on my suggestions and recommendations during that period. Pitching to a client is very different right. from pitching to an investor. Sure. Okay, your investor really needs to know the nuts and bolts of how does this business work, how, how will you make money and how will that Invest to make money. Sure. So it's really important that you are speaking to the elements, as we discussed last time, that the investors want to hear. Right? And I hope that's what I will, I will see in your revised pitches today. You're going to go into the holding area, which is to the right of here, and then when I'm ready for each of you, you'll be called. All right. So, good luck. Okay. Thank you. See you soon. The winner of NCB Capital Quest will benefit from a private equity investment of up to $50 million. But what exactly is an equity investment? An equity investment is where an investor puts money in a business in exchange for an ownership stake in that business. This is a more flexible funding solution as there is no immediate need for repayment. Because the private equity investor takes on more risk by foregoing immediate repayment, they will require a higher rate of return on their investment over the long term and also require a higher level of transparency in the day-to-day -day running of the business. In this way, the equity investor can ensure that value is created for all shareholders. Most of us are familiar with public equity. This is when the ownership of a business in the form of shares is offered to the public via a stock exchange, for example, the Jamaica Stock Exchange. On the other hand, private equity is when individual investors and organizations like NCB Capital Markets invest in companies that are not listed on a stock exchange. In Jamaica, it's common for the typical entrepreneur to rely solely 
on traditional bank financing as a means to finance the business operations. Unfortunately, in many instances, the typical entrepreneur can't access such financing because of the risk profile of his or her business. With that said, Private equity financing provides a great alternative for such businesses, especially businesses that are in the early stages of its life cycle. For such businesses, private equity financing is probably a much better alternative for two reasons. One, it allows the business to expand without the burden of a loan repayment. And two, it puts the business in a much better position to access a traditional loan at a later date due to a more robust balance sheet. At best, a private equity investor can, along with financing, bring expertise and relationships to the business to enhance its competitive advantage. In episode 3, Levi Roots mentioned that he gave up 40% of his business on Dragon's Den but in exchange, he got more than cash. He received invaluable mentorship and relationships, which resulted in his business converting from a 65 bottles per week operations to having access to the largest retailers in the UK, making him a millionaire. When I went to the Dragons then, what I went to do was just to bargain for 20% for 50,000. But as with any investor, they will always want a little bit more. And I had to end up actually giving away 40% for that same 50,000. But what that extra 20% brought me was just another dragon, another fantastic entrepreneur that could be able to add something to the whole package. Visit ncbcapitalquest.com for more tips on how to take your business to the next level. Ready as I'll be at All this right, point. Let's go then. All right. So why don't we pretend that the panelists are there? Okay. And you will just get straight into your pitch. Okay, sure. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Javit Nixon and I'm a director of Vein Centers of Jamaica. Vein Centers of Jamaica is a boutique medical practice that specializes in the treatment of varicose veins and other venous insufficiencies. And these are some before and after pictures for pre persons who are suffering from um, um, serious vein conditions and also spider veins. These are the before and the after. We will see significant reduction in spider veins and also venous vein. Post investment, we believe that we can scale our margins because currently our break even point is five, um, five um, patients. So if we can export that model to the rest of the Caribbean, we believe in the next three years, we can increase those margins to over 75%. First of all, you have a lot of work to do to get the visuals right. The, this, you know, PowerPoint, bullet points, writing isn't going to cut it, right. all right? Since you are planning to scale and go, you know, to the right. Caribbean, right. why not introduce it then? Why not introduce it as a potential in terms of the size of the market. Okay. Right? So, um, okay. so when because I'm talking I about think the pain, I, I should talk about the size of the market. You can move that into the, the market overview. I think okay. those two should come sure. together. Clear problem plus a large market is going to represent a great opportunity for the investors. That's what they want to hear. Sure. Um, that there is a sufficiently large market that you can scale and you can, you know, um, you're significantly increase your revenues and their returns. I didn't hear that in your pitch. I think it went fairly well, given um, this is our first practice pitch. There's obviously a lot of work to be done on it. Um, there, the, the points about the visuals and all of that is, is, is well taken. And um, we, we're going to do, just have to do the work, uh, but I think overall we, we benefited from the advice and I think it will show up in our uh, pitches to come. So I was a little disappointed that Javet wasn't better prepared. Uh, of course, he didn't know that he was going to be pitching today, but as I said to both he and Denise earlier, uh, when you are looking for investment, you have to be ready at the drop of a hat to make your pitch. Uh, he has a lot of work to do, <laughs> and he's admitted that. Uh, he needs to uh, 
restructure his slides. They need way more graphics than he has. He has to order the information better, include a lot of information that he missed out on. So I hope he gets to it very quickly. Hello, this is Hanako. Okay, coming right up. So Hanako, are you ready? Well, I am actually ready to get your assistance to perfect my pitch. I want you to go through the presentation as you have it right now. Right. Hello, I'm Hanika watkis Forso, CEO of Patwa Apparel. We are about Jamaican messages making the world smile. And today I'm here to give you an opportunity to invest, you know, Today I'm here to, I'm giving you the investment opportunity of a lifetime, one you've always wanted, to invest in a global revolution. Our customers are those that really love to have a good time. They frequent places like Reggae Sum Fest. They're, they enjoy having living in the moment. They are fun loving. They go across all different age cohorts um, and there is no uh, cult, there is no race or class barrier in terms of who our customers are. Um, okay, all right, where am I? Let's see, I won't do this, I promise you. We're asking for, in order to, you know, get, set our motion, get our, um, it, we're okay, asking, pause. yes. Pause, and I'm gonna pause. Mm -hmm. You see, at this point in time now, you have spent almost six minutes, mm -hmm. almost still doing a, you know, you, you did a lot of overview going back and forth. Yes, competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting to the crux of the matter, which is the ask, and you only have two, two minutes, minutes, two something minutes. So the purpose of you standing in front of these investors is because this is where you are right now. Mm -hmm. Financially, this is where you are. The opportunity is there. The market is there. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are saying, I cannot get to this because of because I'm constrained by uh, by what what is it Do have no money it's money, money what else but what else Product needs to be developed absolutely marketing right. right so this is now where this is what you're listening for so what are you asking for mm -hmm. because you've gone through a lot of the past know the need to understand I'm to asking for X amount of money how are we going to use this money what are we going to do with this money? What's the impact on what I have now? What am I going to improve in terms of what I have now with your funding that's going to allow me to now increase my profitability? If you already said you're in a negative position for the past two years. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to be doing with the funding to get you out of this hole and to get the company on a solid footing? Because remember, investors are looking for what? Profits. Yes. They want a return on their investment. I had kind of structured my presentation in a particular way and, and, and I've had to rearrange it a few times because I'm still not, you know, I was still not certain as to how I want to present it. The danger sometimes is that because we have used other ways of presenting in other competitions, we may use that or feel comfortable using it. Now, if we're in a competition and we're given specific guidelines and the flow, then I would see to, I would prefer to see Henneke use that because when she started to present, she even realized as she was presenting that her information was not flowing and she was all over the place in some instances, sometimes repeating information. Kenny Palmer speaking. Okay, thank you. I'll be there. So you ready to pitch now? Yes, I am ready to go, Sandra. Pleasant afternoon. My name is Denise Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Southside Distributors Limited. We are an agro-processing facility located in the Breadbasket Parish of St. Elizabeth. Over the past two years, Southside sales increased by 20% from 46.6 million in 2012 to approximately 60 million dollars in 2013. Our strategy is to be, be, be <coughs> is to begin with an with our inter internal process to make it company make the company more commercially profitable enterprise. Over the past two years, Southside sales increased by 20% from 46.6 
million in 2012 to approximately 60 million dollars in 2013. You need to enunciate okay. better. You know, some of yes. the words are not coming out okay. as well as they should. Where are your markets? I didn't hear. Is it London? Is it New York? Is it Toronto? I didn't I mention the both markets, US, Canada, and UK. Yeah, but, but US, where is the market? US, Canada, and UK are big places, where? right? So <laughs> if, you are, if you are exporting to New York, for example, okay. you can speak about the population of Jamaicans in New York. It was a little nerve-wracking to be honest because of the fact that never prepared never thought of it for today so the mindset wasn't there and of course the preparation is incomplete she seemed nervous today uh, I guess it's coming closer to the D-Day so she's probably a little more nervous uh, I would say though that her slide presentation was much improved she had vastly improved her graphics and a lot of the information we talked about that she required in her pitch presentation were there although there were also some key elements which were missing so she has to do some work on those good afternoon okay i'll be there hi marcia I am back. Okay, and I am wonderful. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to start and now. Okay. I am Nayana Williams with award-winning Lifespan Company Limited, producer of Lifespan Spring Water, the only naturally alkaline spring water in this side of the hemisphere. Lifespan facility and source is located in Spring Garden, Buff Bay, Portland. The spring water flows from the highest point of the Blue Mountains where it travels for over 14 years um, through deep underground aquifers to arrive at the spring water outlet. Then it is captured in a bottle to satisfy the thirst of your life. In 2011, lifespan... Okay, I'm going to ask you to pause on this. Mm -hmm. You're giving an overview of the company. Mm -hmm. So you want to start off by stating, yes, this is the award-winning Lifespan Company Limited. It was started in X mm -hmm. by the two of you. Okay, and it produces the only truly alkaline water mm -hmm. in this hemisphere. Right. All right, the process for filtrating it and how you do it, I don't want you to actually put it there, I want you to get that more into the product or service itself later on, a description of the product. Barriers to entry in the naturally alkaline spring water market is high, as there are not much of this type of water that exists in the world, and Lifespan is the only known source that exists in Jamaica. Who are you targeting for your products? Um, who is your target market? Our target market is our persons who are educated in health and did who you wants to. Did say that anywhere in there? No, I okay. did not. So, <laughs> so I want you to come back to this again. Mm -hmm. Now let me hear you tell me, what would you do with the first 50 million? The first 50 million will be used to upgrade um, our warehouse space mm -hmm. and used towards marketing. Now, Mm -hmm. Why is that important now? Um, that is important because we actually do not have enough space at All the right. moment. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I want you to come yeah. up with. Having presented it then, you need to close with a very nice close in terms of, you may see that with this return on investment that we're looking on within three to five years, that this will be an excellent investment mm -hmm. of your resources and your funds okay. to your investors. All right, but I really want you to reorder it. Mm -hmm. I, I will. What I've done is a draft of what my pitch is going to be. So now I think I have the additional tools needed to complete it. Even though her funding requirement inside there is a long-term funding requirement, this investor pitch is for a specific amount of money. So I prefer that she fixes her presentation to address that amount of money, which is the 50 million that she's asking her for phase one of the project and amend it. So she'll be doing that. Okay, I'm on my way. So are we ready? Well, not really, but I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to just present to me now as if you were presenting. Okay. 
All right, so let's go ahead. I just want to explain the picture that will be here, yes. though. So this, the next graphic will be a picture, our ad, all, we, um, relax, we've got it covered, all your stationary needs in one place at competitive prices. Barriers to entry, yes, new competition can come into play. They can import just as we do because really it is just us four at the top, the three competitors, myself, mm -hmm. and then you have a variety of customers that we sell to. The ask is $50 million and this is to purchase land. After a lot of research, the, own, the best way to grow our company is to buy land and build on it to suit our needs. One of the things I want you to focus on is when you talk about the competitor, when you say who is currently in the market, whether they are direct competitors, are they directly competing with you, and if so, what advantages does your ha company have okay. over your competitors' offerings? You could talk to who future competitors are, where they are likely to come from, because you have to talk about this, this is the market, this is the trend, and then interesting to investors as well is barriers to new product or services entering the market. So the reason for expanding or wanting to own your own building is because you are what? We are out of space. You're we have a space. space constraint right now. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole point of getting the investment so that we can have a larger warehouse space. You saw my office. Mm -hmm. It's very small and it is packed with goods. That's what I want you to focus on. Okay. So you see, you're saying, I'm going to buy land, but buying land to do what? Okay. You have to say that the purpose of the investment is that where we are now, having grown as a family business for um, how many years? 26 years. We are bursting out of the current space we're in right now. The demand is growing for our products, it right. is. You could then speak to your um, annual sales growing year over year. You right. could say percentage growth year over year. And then that you will need to expand your facilities to be able to also better service your customers because the right. flow. I thought I was pretty much ready, but I realized that I'm not as ready as I thought I was and I need to practice a lot and get my numbers together. This is a company that has been around for quite a while and where you're going to be seeing the transition from one generation to the next. And I think Lizanne, as the general manager, is very knowledgeable of her company, products and her numbers. But as she said, not ready for tomorrow in terms of all the details, but by the end of today, she should be. Good evening, oh, entrepreneurs. Thanks, JP. Yes, you all look very hungry. Not tonight, no wine tonight. You guys had a long day today eh? with Marcia and Sandra. You have okay. something to eat, sure. and uh, I'm going to leave you guys. Enjoy the pizza. Things that investors look for in determining whether or not to invest in a business include strong leadership, passion and vision, strong customer value proposition and growth potential, and appreciation for good corporate governance and business owner flexibility. A few episodes of NCB Capital Quest have shown that business owners need to be ready at any time to pitch their businesses to potential investors. One may have a very strong business but if you are unable to effectively sell your business as a good investment, you may be unable to attract an investor. Private equity investors tend to have a time horizon for an exit. Levi Roots spoke about preemption rights which allowed him to repurchase shares from the private equity investor before being offered to others. So it was a very valuable thing I had in my contract with them. They had to offer me back the shares first. Exit can also be via sale to a new strategic investor or could be an exit via a public offering on a stock exchange. We believe private equity investment in Jamaica has significant potential once there is the right ecosystem to support it. Today, there are a few players. For early stage businesses, private equity can come from family and friends. There is also the Angel Investor Network. For established businesses in search of private or public equity, 
NCB Capital Markets provides flexible funding solutions for your business needs. Visit ncbcapitalquest.com for more tips on how to take your business to the next level. Our guest judges for today are Lissandra Rickards, Entrepreneur Program Manager at the Branson Center of Entrepreneurship and Robin Levy, Deputy General Manager, Jamaica Stock Exchange. Good afternoon. I'm Denise Palmer from Southside Distributors. Hi. I'm the CEO and founder for Southside Distributors. We are from Comapen, St. Elizabeth. St. Bess. We are an processing facility. And we, we started in 2006 with one stove, two pots, and one employee in a little rented shop. We increased our export sales from 56% to 80% within that two year period. That's great, Denise, but what are the products? <laughs> you still haven't told us what it is you make. Yeah, okay. I did say agriculture section. We, yeah, we but what, um, that doesn't tell us what the product is. Okay. Mm -hmm. We make canned ackees, canned kalaloo, jerk seasoning, jerk sauce, and our flagship product, um, Salomon Agonde. We really do 16 products, but those are the export products, and we are export focus at the moment. Denise, one more thing. Mm -hmm. You founded this company? Yes. This is your baby? Yes. yes. I don't understand why you'd be reading from notes. You should know this stuff like the back of your hand. You mentioned a statistic there about export sales that I thought was really big that you didn't focus, emphasize enough. What percentage of revenues are exports? At the moment, 56% of our revenue That's export. That's awesome. More than half? Yes. And if it increases by 80%, that's a big thing. Yes. This is the slide I was waiting for. We have indirect competitors out of Costa Rica and the Caribbean, Mexico, and those areas. But also there is counterfeit brand Jamaican product that's on the market, which is tapping in into our market. And therefore, we need to, be, to really take upon that to ensure that our products are available, natural Jamaican products are available so that it, there is a solution and there is no option to really sell um, counterfeit products, counterfeit Jamaican products. Counterfeit if, if you're going to really speak to that in the final presentation, you have to be a lot more clear as to what it is that you are suggesting you're going to do. Um, it can't just be we have to take up that. You have to say what it is you are going to do or what it is that you as part of an association are going to do. You're going to say, well, you know, my brand is going to have a Jamaican flag on it, and it's going to say Bureau of Standards or something, and nobody else is, none of the counterfeits will, so we'll, yeah, you have to be very strong on it. I still have some work to, to do, and I think I might have overestimated in terms of the notes that I have, so I have to address. So it's, not, it's more zooming in on some of the relevant um, points that I need to make. I thought Denise had some good achievements to date that she had, a, if she'd brought it about in a more powerful way, it could have had a greater impact on me as, a, an, as an audience to her pitch. She has a, a good track record. She's built this business from scratch. And it's, she's grown it, she's an export. I mean, which investor doesn't like US dollar earnings when you spend in Jamaican? She needs to, you know, really bring those things to the forefront of the presentation and show, you know, that she's on the ball and she's, she's in charge of our business. Lisanne Chai and I'm the general manager and one of the owners of the stationery center. Good afternoon. We are a local wholesaler in the stationery and office supplies industry and we are the go-to company for all your stationery and office supplies needs. We distribute the widest selection of stationery items in the market. This allows us to offer convenient and efficient service to our customers, saving them time and effort. This is where I want to pause you. Okay. Because if I took this slide and I put it on another stationery supply store's mm -hmm. deck of slides, they'd probably say the exact same thing. What do you do that they don't do? There needs to be something more tangible here. Hurricane Ivan, which hit in 2009, was a big catastrophe for our company. 
the gully wall behind our building broke away and eroded all the earth beneath our building. So our building floors all collapsed with all our goods and damaged our building. And we were able to pull through that without financing. So that is one of our key successes. Another one is... <sighs> I don't know what I wanted to see on this slide as an investor. Like I love the story. As a person, I love the story. It's a nice story. As an investor, I want to see huge growth. I want to see exports. I want to see huge, large customers. Can you wow us with any other customer names you have? Like that's what I kind of want to see on this slide. You so far pretty much spoken to past tense. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting to hear what you're going to do with the money and but you haven't gotten there yet. Right. You see how long we've waited for it? What are you going to do with the money and how is this going to exponentially grow your company? Okay. And that's what's going to make you a viable investment. This shows a percentage increase in sales for the past five years. I hate this slide. Why? Because it shows a negative trend. Oh. Even though I know what it is you're saying. Right. You grew by this much in 2011, you grew by that. I hate it. Show me instead the sales. Okay. And you will then have a slide that's, that has a positive slope. You with me? It's just the impression okay. that you get when you look at a, when you look when at you look a, at a graph okay. or a slide. And it looks like you made no sales in 2010. Well, I was going to say, because this is the percentage increase in sales. So 2009 sales and 2010 sales were very comparable. So that's why it would be flat right there, because they were very comparable. Another reason you should take Robin's advice. Right. Yeah. No, I'm not feeling so prepared. Based on what they had to say, I have a lot of work to review and go over. So I have a lot of work to do this week for the finals. She did a great job telling the history of her company and brought me on this journey. But then questions came up. She opened some doors. She didn't answer them up front. And that would be my big uh, recommendation to her. Answer the questions before they're even asked. Hi. I'm Diana Williams with Lifespan Company Limited, producer of Lifespan Spring Water, the only naturally alkaline spring water in Jamaica. As a matter of fact, the only naturally alkaline spring water in the Western Hemisphere. Um, Lifespan facility and source is located in Spring Garden, Buff Bay, Portland. Lifespan was incorporated in January 2005 and trading began in June of 2006. The starting factory was a 1,200 square feet building and we had to truck the water to the factory. We produced the first 10 cases, loaded it into our pickup truck, drove to East Portland and sold all 10 cases the very first day and then we were on our way to doing business. In I'm sorry, can I interrupt you? Sure. Are you familiar with this story? Yes. Did you live this story? I lived the story but I am kind of nervous right now. So. Okay, take a breath, relax. Well, looking at the overall local bottled water market, um, the brand with the most market share has a 65% share. And then the, the but it's, what happens is that it's a purified water, it's, uh, the pH is really low, and the other brand on the market has a 15% share, but, as, um, but the water as well is, has a low pH, way below seven. And then there's a third, which is us. We are the third largest bottled water on the market with a 4% market share. I would have liked if you had shown me a graph showing me the, the um, do you have industry figures? She just I gave do. us a lot of figures I up do. there. She gave us percentages. But what I didn't still, hear is I can... what the sales in the market are. And is it growing oh, or not? Okay. That's I, a good point. I, I do have those. Okay. So I can um, All right. yeah, restructure those. Our revenues have increased tenfold in the last five years. Um, we have realized gross margins of over 60%. We are now down to 34%. Now this is a result of taking on a distributor versus distributing ourselves. But of course our um, volumes, yeah. volumes have increased. So this stuff that you have in that last bullet point should be pulled out and put on a growth strategy or projections or something yeah. slide and just bullet point them, you know? I had to do like a crunch session trying to get this presentation for today. Um, but, you know, they really, really told me what I needed to do. So I have a lot of work to go and do. The biggest detractor 
from her presentation was the style of it, was the reading from the iPad when she just came in. I'm not convinced that their marketing is where it needs to be. They've been in this space now for how many years? Seven Six, nine. seven, eight years. And it's the first time hearing about alkalinity and how much better this is than Evian or anything else. Good afternoon, Mr. Levy, Ms. Rickards. Hi. How are you doing? I'm very good. My name is Javit Nixon. I'm a director of Vein Centers of Jamaica. Vein Centers of Jamaica is a boutique medical practice that was started in 2012 by Drs. Bart Moose and Hilary Brown. Both Dr. Bart Moose and Hilary Brown are vascular trained, American board certified vascular surgeons. So Hilary and Bart studied at Yale together. One of his trips, um, when Hillary was planning her visit back, we drove from Kingston to Portland, and we're talking about some of the things that they had learned and that they were doing at Yale and how that was applicable to the Jamaican situation. And how uh, could a medical company uh, be created as a, in a retail sense out of that? The idea of, of retail medicine is the ability to go in and, and get what you need done and get out quickly. Is that a medical term of art or something when you say a medical company in a retail sense and, and a, that's... It's a term that we use internally to describe what we do at Vein Center. Because on the business level, when we speak to retail, it's as opposed to wholesale or marketing or, dis or manufacturing or distribution. So it has a specific meaning in a business context, perhaps different from a medical. In, 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 in our context, what we mean is that you're dealing with an individual to an individual um, as opposed to amalgamate, an amalgamation of, of, of a service. So you're dealing with a direct uh, kind of exchange with the persons. So it's more personalized? Exactly. Right, so you want to punch that up and say, you know, how, how can we offer medicine you get where I'm going with this, Sandra? I do. I think the intro is a little on the long side. Um, I'd love to hear up front exactly what you do. So I love the backstory, but just get to the point a little bit quicker. So one of the, the things, one of the pain points that was very evident in our discussions, and I'm a layman, so I had to ask a lot of questions. In Jamaica, um, most of these procedures to correct vein conditions are done in open surgery. You're out for three weeks. You can't go to, to work. You, you, can't, you can't be productive at all. The procedures that they were doing in the States were half an hour to an hour. The person was able to go to work the same day. Um, it was extremely um, low downtime. So love that comparison between what happens in the US versus Jamaica, but maybe bring it to life for me a little bit more with an example of what kind of vein treatments there are, right? Sure. So give me an example. Why would I need a vein treatment as part of this 50%? Sure. The, so, the, the, that section is actually addressed lower down when looking at the market size, but um, if you want, if you're suggesting now that I bring it up, then that just can be done. Just throw in one example, like, for example, I just, you might have very close veins and, you know, sure. some short example up, here, up front, and you can get into more detail later on in the presentation. So if you open the door, you have to give an example. Yeah. You have to give a for example. You have to punch it. <laughs> right. I'll get it too. Absolutely. All right, cool. No, right then and there. Can I ask you a quick question? How many slides have you got? The, I'm not, my slides are about 30. 30 slides? All right, but I have timed myself. I'm very comfortable with the material. I've worked with the Vein Center for two and a half years. I'm not um, necessarily proceeding with the slides. So I'm not reading off the slides. Okay, I'm fine that you're not reading off the slides. But the rule of thumb in presentation, and I'm sure your mentors went through this with you, is three minutes per slide. I was gonna say one minute, so 10 slides. It's, it's three minutes per slide on average. If you're quick and if you're, if you're familiar and you're not gonna be reading or referring slides, to the slides, yeah. if they're just there for- A lot of the slides, I will not refer then, to them at all. Then you shouldn't have them on the presentation. Uh, it is important because I would like to present the investors with some kind of prospectus that they can digest at some point in time. Then you give it to them in a separate document. But if, if you, whatever you're going to throw up, whatever you're going to put up on the screen must be relevant to what's coming out of your mouth. Sure. You're not going to be reading it, but sure. you're going to be, it's going to be helping to make your point. Absolutely. So if you're not going to refer to it, 
kill it. I think we're about 70% there. We have to do some work on the transition from the different points. It's only 10 minutes, so you want to make sure that you hit all the important points that the investors hear exactly what they want to hear, that you're very clear on your unique selling point, uh, that you position the, your company where it should be positioned, and those are the things that I'll be working on. He really had way too many slides. <laughs> That's true. Um, and the slides need to not be distracting. Um, to him because you know, he's a marketer. He should be the show. He seemed very prepared and I thought that any question that I asked him and really pushed him on he had a great response Good afternoon, my name is Henika Watkins Porto CEO of Pato Power Limited. We are located at shop number 12 Devon House and today I'm here to give you an opportunity to invest in a global revolution. Our business model is a simple one. We design in-house, both in terms of the graphics and the collection. After that, then the production is outsourced to a local manufacturing facility. After that, they're retrieved and screen printing is done in-house, followed by sales. And of course, distribution is handled by um, our retail outlet at Devon House, as well as through our retail partners. Our products, of course, include... Who are your retail partners, apart from De apart Devon House? Apart from Devon House, we have, of course, things to make at airports and hotel gift shops. And just customers, maybe um, customers we've had over the years, my co-workers and so on. So in other words, besides Devon House, just things Jamaica. Things Jamaica and, and, and direct sales. And direct sales, correct. Okay. I would just add in some specifics mm -hmm. in order to give it more weight. It's a little too high level. So just give me the names of the places in addition to Devon House and just yeah. put your achievements up front. So you're going to say, we're in Devon House, we're in Sanks International Airport, we're in Norman Airport, we're in here, we're there. Everywhere things Jamaica are, we are. And you, you can, you know, it gives it some more credibility. Yeah. We want to start, we're not asking for much, just 15 million Jamaican dollars. Just 15 million. Just 15 million Jamaican dollars. Right, and 35% of that will go, go towards product development and production. We haven't said what I get for 15 million. A percentage of the company. What percentage? Um, we, we haven't quite uh, put a value on it just yet. Yeah. That's okay. a big problem for me. You have to know what you're coming in here to ask, and you can't ask for something. This is not Santa but, Claus. You have to say what you're giving. If you're even going to use my 15 million and bump up to 5, 10 million, that really doesn't give the investor a lot of elbow room and a lot of comfort. Okay, so based on our plans, because what we've identified, right, the product itself needs to be developed. And so we've allocated 35% for product development and some to production. So developed in the sense, both in terms of the graphics and in terms of um, the actual design and the collection. So we want to engage a full service production facility that would do that, take care of the concept from the storyboarding straight through the production. And um, that will, will, Im, will embed in that something that is distinct to the patchwork. So the growth strategy that you've presented, I'm still not seeing how it will grow the company to a large enough scale so that an investor can really dig in and understand how he's going to get back 45 million next year or 100 million in five years. You know, the guys that you're going to present to next week, they're looking for large returns. So I want to see that growth strategy shine through. Okay, so we're, we, we've looked at the um, product development aspect of it, yeah. Before you leave though, um, the thing is again, you are not a startup. You've been in this business for a while. To tell somebody you're going to take their money to put back into product development, um, Mary is a question mark. So what you want to do is to emphasize that, you know, this is to bring it to the next level. This is to, you know, you have to really punch it up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because mm -hmm. if, if right. you're leaving... Right, so new product that you have to get you. There you go. Get you. I am feeling that I still need a lot of work to get prepared um, based on the pointers that were given, that so, there's some information that needs to come across more, effect, more pronounced and so that it can be a buy-in, I still need to work on that. When you look at other brands that have huge celebrities backing them, such as Usain Bolt or Bob Marley, and the story and the connection to those brands, she's going to have to build a really powerful story to be in the same ring as those guys. You know, she has some, she has some very nice 
sayings and it's, it's, you know, it's humorous and it's funny, I don't know how much of a connection, a personal connection people are going to feel just to a saying or a slogan as the case may be. It's, yeah. it's, she really needs to, to, to bring that across in her presentation and punch that up a bit more. Totally. Follow the conversation using the hashtag MCB Capital Quest and tell us whose presentation was the strongest. Speaking with the mentors and then going into the mock judges, speaking with the mock judges, I realized that it's really not a walking in the park. This is reality and we have a lot to get done. I took their suggestions. I think I'll have a better pitch as a result. Very interesting. A um, lot of very good um, interaction and suggestions. I understood one thing and I went in there doing something different. So now I have to go back, you know, revisit that and it's, it's a lot of work, I think, and I need to be prepared. I have a lot of work to do. I thought I was on the right track. That proved to be wrong. So, but I'm very appreciative of the suggestions and the advice that they gave me. I will definitely, definitely use them. And hopefully my pitch will be much better as a result. Next week, we'll take a look at the entrepreneur's journey leading to their final pitch to the financiers. Whatever it takes, I'm going to have to do some homework and ensure that I come out on top. Cash them on one t um, 20, 20 euros. Thank you. We feel this is a great opportunity to uh, get a, a Jamaican-grown business um, that has that has been using global technology in a very strong way. In starting these 10 locations, that would require um, about $20 million if we're going to go all over. We want to increase our distribution and have the product available just about anywhere. We are an award-winning company as well, a bone one of manufacturing from National Bakery in 2012. My dad taught me everything about this business, mm -hmm. even how to pack a shelf. What percent of the total overall stationary market do you think you have? I think we have about percent, 70 percent. 70 percent? Mm -hmm. We need to make at least one billion dollars US per year at Lifespan. That's it, 45 seconds. No, you have more to go. <laughs> <laughs>